Students, today now what we are going to see is, we are going to learn something related to quadratic equation. I am going to make you understand how to factorize quadratic equation. Presuming that you know what exactly a quadratic equation is, here we are going to factorize it. Right? So it's quadratic equation. I have seen that students find it a bit difficult in factorizing it. It's very very simple. If somebody has to tell me a simple quadratic equation, say x squared plus 5x plus 6. x squared plus 5x plus 6. How to factorize a quadratic equation? It's, even quadratic equation the factorization is also termed as splitting the middle term. Splitting the middle term means we need to split this particular term. In the process of doing so, the first term and the last term remains the same. Now, over here, sum should be the middle term. The coefficient of the middle term should act as sum. So here, what is the coefficient? The coefficient is plus 5. So I shall say sum should be plus 5. And product should be the last constant term, which is plus 6. Now we need to split this particular middle term in such a way. There has to be two numbers. There has to be two numbers. And you split this middle term in such a way that sum of those two numbers is plus 5. And product of exactly those two numbers should be plus 6. The two numbers are nothing but plus 2 and plus 3. So as I said earlier, the first term remains the same. Plus 2, we write down the variable along with it. Plus 3, we write down the variable. And the last term is 6. Now, we need to factorize. We need to factorize. When we factorize from the first two terms, what shall I say in common? x is getting common. I get x plus 2. I need to find out what else is getting common from the second two terms. I say I get 3 common and again I get x plus 2. Always have a cross check. 3 into x, 3x. 3, 3 into plus 2, plus 6. That means whatever we have done is absolutely correct. Over here also one can go for x into x, x squared. x into plus 2 is plus 2x. Having said that, the final answer is going to be x plus 3, x plus 2. Student, one simple thing one has to keep in mind is whatever the first bracket will be, the same will be the second bracket. And over here also, a student can write down x plus 2 ahead of x plus 3 and can get the answer as x plus 2 into x plus 3. I have written x plus 3 into x plus 2. You can write down vice versa also. This sum is quite easy as the factors were quite easy. But then the students find it a bit difficult when the signs over here keeps on changing. Here they get minus, here also they get minus and times both the things minus. So there is a, prop, a table I shall give you, a table in which we work out all the probable outcomes that how many types of sums exist. I just draw three columns. I just draw three columns. In the first column I write down sum. In the second column I write down product. And in the third column I write down numbers. I bifurcate the third column into two. The first being bigger number and the second number is always the smaller number. Again, this is from my side. Now, let's see what are the probable outcomes. The first probability is that the sum can be plus. Simultaneously, the product can also be plus. Sum can be plus. Simultaneously, the product can also be plus. Then, what are the two numbers going to be? Whether it's bigger or smaller, both the numbers are going to be plus plus. The example which I give over here absolutely fits on this particular criteria. You can see the sum is plus, the product is plus, and eventually both the numbers what we got as plus 2 and plus 3. The numbers are plus, plus. The second probability is, the second probability is sum is plus, sum is plus, product is minus, sum is plus, product is minus, then, then, always, the bigger number is going to be plus and the smaller number is going to be minus. Bigger number is going to be plus and the smaller number is going to be minus. Let's take one example based on that. Let's take a simple example based on that where this particular criteria fits out. So I stated I want sum as plus and product as minus. So let me say p square. Let me say p square plus 13p. I have taken change the variable instead of x I have gone for P minus minus 48. Now, if you happen to look at it, the sum over here is plus plus 13. The product out here 
is minus minus 48. As per the way the table I have drawn, again there will be two numbers, but I for myself I have given you a simple technique. The bigger number will be plus and smaller number will be minus. So what actually we have to go beyond this, beyond 13, as far as the bigger number is concerned. So we say, and for this, and for this, my dear students, you need to have tables. You need to know tables very well. 16 threes are 48. 16 threes are 48. Now it is you who have to correlate 16 and 3 so as to get 13. Is there a relation between 16 and 3 so as to get 13? Indeed, yes. How the relation works out? First term remains the same. P square. 16 plus 16p minus 3p minus 48. So what is the bigger number? Bigger number is plus, smaller number is minus as stated over here. Now absolutely on a parallel line you need to remove common, p common, p plus 16 minus what shall be common out here? No variable is getting common but yes 3 is getting common, minus 3 common, p since the minus sign is taken outside the inside sign will change and I shall get p plus 16. The first bracket and the second bracket should be the same. Let's work out whether we have done this correct or not. Minus 3 into p minus 3p minus 3 into plus 16 is minus 48. Now the answer is p minus 3 into p plus 16. This is the second one as far as the second probable outcome is concerned. Let's take the third probability. What could be the third probability? The sum is minus. The sum is minus. And the product is also minus. The sum is minus. Sum is minus. The product is also minus. Then what could be the outcome? When the sum is minus, product is also minus, you will have two numbers. Bigger number is going to be minus and the smaller number is going to be plus. Bigger number is going to be minus and the smaller number is going to be plus. Let's see example based on that. A square minus 15A minus 54. A square minus 15A minus 54. Can you see? Can you see that the sum is minus which is minus 15. The product is minus 54. We once again need to. A simple technique being stated from my side that Answer is a square minus 15a minus 54. a square, the first term as it is. Now, sum is minus, product is also minus. And I stated there are two numbers, one big minus, another big plus. 18 threes are 54. 18 threes are 54. So, minus 18a plus 3a so you can work out minus 18 plus 3 is minus 15 and minus 18 into plus 3 is minus 54 is minus 54 again removing common a into a minus 18 plus what shall be common over here 3 into a minus 18 always cross check because 3 18s are 54 3 into a is 3a here also a into a a square a into 18 is minus 18 Answer is a plus 3 and a minus 18. You must be wondering that why haven't I changed a sign over here? I did over here. Students, minus sign was taken outside common and that's why the inner sign will change. Here the outside sign was plus and that's why there is no change in the inner sign. The last probable outcome is the fourth one. Where the sum is minus. Where the sum is minus but product is plus. When the sum is minus the product is plus, the answer is both the numbers has to be minus whether it's a bigger number or a smaller number. I stated I want sum as minus but the product as plus. Sum as minus but the product as plus. Both the numbers shall be minus. I shall give you an example based on that. x square minus 9x plus 14x. Sorry, x square minus 9x plus 14. Now you can see the middle term, the sum is minus and the last term, the product, product is plus 14, product is plus 14. 
Now, as I stated, both the numbers will be minus. As I stated, both the numbers is going to be minus. Let's factorize. The first term remains as it is. Minus 7 and minus 2. Minus 7x, minus 2x. Minus 7 minus 2 gives you minus 9. And minus 7 into minus 2 will give you plus 14. So it's plus 14 out here. Try to remove common. x into x minus 7. Minus 2. My dear students, minus sign is getting common out. So inner sign will change. x minus 7. The first and the last bracket should be the same. Let's see. Minus 2 into x is minus 2x. Minus 2 into minus 7 is plus 14. Eventually here also, x into x, x squared. x into minus 7 is minus 7x. So answer is x minus 2, x minus 7. So students, these are four probable outcomes whereby which you can have the sum may be positive, product are positive, I give you the number, plus plus. Sum may be positive, product is negative, then the bigger number is plus, one number is minus. Sum is negative, product is negative, bigger number is minus, and smaller number is plus. Sum is negative, product is positive, both the numbers are negative. Students, this table is only for weak students who cannot manage to buy a table, but I feel those who know table very well, try to get correlation between the numbers, then I feel that this table should not work out and this table they should not work out I should say but those who are very weak in table they should take this table as a very helpful measure right I shall give you one more sum one more criteria which is not based on this particular table one more sum is what I will give you and a hint on that particular one say the sum is p square plus p minus 132 students there is no coefficient in the middle one so we say the coefficient over here is 1 so sum is 1 and the product is minus 132. What concept I wanted to tell you today, irrespective the sign of sum, though over here the sum is plus 1, though over here the sum is plus 1. The concept which I wanted to tell you over here is, whenever the sum is plus 1 or minus 1, I reiterate myself, irrespective of the sign for the sum, but if the sum happens to be 1, whether it's a plus 1 or minus 1, the two numbers shall always be consecutive numbers. In the problems of this nature, you never found two numbers as consecutive numbers. In these problems, you never found problems as uh, some, uh, two numbers as consecutive numbers. But whenever the sum is 1, maybe plus 1 or minus 1, the numbers are always going to be consecutive numbers. Let's solve this one. And I shall say it's p square plus 12 minus 11 plus 12p minus 11p minus 132 plus 12 minus 11 is going to give me plus 1 plus 12 into minus 11 is minus 132. Work out in a similar fashion p into p plus 12 minus 11 into p plus 12. Once again, outside sign minus, so inner sign changes p minus 11, p plus 12. This is how we solve more or less a quadratic equation. I hope you must have got much more things from this particular session. Thank you.